Okay, so this is this is where I really screw up. Kajan Johnson versus Islam Makachev. Yes, that is right. I am not just some random YouTube hero that likes to talk a bunch about MMA and how you shouldn't do this technique or that technique, right? I actually fought at a pretty decent level for a pretty long time. My career was 18 years long. I started fighting after two months of training. I fought 10 times my first year. I fought everybody that I could fight that was good. I never ran from a fight. I fought Josh Thompson. I fought Rory McDonald. I fought Islam Makhachev. I fought Rustam Khabalov. I fought Adriano Martins and many, many others. So proof, me fighting Islam Makhachev. Although this isn't real proof of my total knowledge prowess because I've learned a lot since this time. Losing is a good way to learn. It really is. Unfortunately, it seems like anyway, it's the only way I learn. It's too bad they didn't show my walkout because my walkout was the bomb. So much fun. 15 and one. And the one guy that knocked him out, I knocked him out. Combat Sambo is serious. Super, super, super sick sport. Maybe the number one martial art for self-defense. It like has everything, right? You can like knee people on the head. You can throw them. You're grabbing clothing. You can throw kicks, punches. It's like super, super serious martial art. Yeah, so I'm feeling good here, man. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really confident. Feeling like I'm gonna crash the party. Just break everybody's beliefs again. I was like always the underdog. Every fight that I had, I was the underdog. So I really took pleasure in beating people and changing people's belief systems on whether or not I could actually fight. Yeah, so like people started calling me Raging Cajun and like my third fight ever back in like 2003 or something. Right, so I had to let people mispronounce my name for most of my career as Cajun in order for the Ragin name to make sense. In this one, this was the, the second fight actually, the Stevie Ray fight was the first one where I told them like, okay, no more of the Ragin nickname and uh, call me Cajun, please. Cajun Johnson, okay, is that what we're doing? Okay, so you can see I'm moving predominantly to uh, the weak side, moving around his lead foot. Although I will change directions back and forth because that becomes predictable. Uh, constantly just trying to be over one attack line or the other attack line, never in the middle of both of the attack lines. This time he's not sick. Work on his cardio. He's been great. See, so you can see that because uh, I have the ability to to switch and fight on both in both stances, it allows me a lot. It allows my movement pattern to be very fluid and, and difficult to figure out, which is great if you're fighting a striker. I created this whole style essentially based off of the incredible amount of power punching juggernaut super tough headed strikers that existed within UFC. Unfortunately, Islam Makhachev is not necessarily a juggernaut power punching striker. He is a like elite level grappler. So this was definitely not the right strategy for this fight. So I knew Islam had a left kick. Um, I was more worried about his left kick than his left hand. Uh, it seemed like he, he, he was decent with it. And I fight at a range where you can't really punch me, you can only kick me. So that was something that I worked on defending. Uh, he missed me with that first one though. Cool little calf kick there. Okay, so I fake the hook and then I go super low on the calf kick. Okay, he was trying to throw me to throw the left hand at me at the same time, but he completely missed because I just wasn't there. See, so you can see here how I'm already running out of real estate. He's down to pressure, pressure, pressure. And if it was just a punch that I had to deal with or just a kick I had to deal with, this isn't the worst thing, uh, at least not for me because of my ability to switch both stances. I'm able to create angles when people are throwing at me, but it almost guarantees that they're gonna connect to the leg, that they're gonna be able to connect to the body. Still feeling him out. I was I was always really patient uh, in my 
at least in my later career, later part of my career, I was really patient off the hop. I used to try to catch people by surprise, but now I would always try to get more information from them. So I want to see what they do and where their mistakes are before I, I, I myself commit, because every time you commit, um, you have the opportunity to finish them, but you also have the opportunity to get finished. A lot of times the, the fight is between who commits first, right? And I was willing to let the crowd boo in order to, uh, to make sure that I won. Yeah, decent little body kick. I still picked it off, but uh, it, it, he got a piece of it. That side kick to the leg is something that I use really heavily. It's very difficult to defend. It's almost impossible to defend. I've still never had anybody um, counter me while I was doing it. Like, you might make me miss, but you, I'm too far away to hit you, right? That's my longest weapon. So what are you going to counter me with if you make my longest weapon miss? You know what I'm saying? Right, I'm, as soon as I switch to cl closed stance, you see that I'm using the jab more. Right, the jab is really useful in closed stance, not really useful in open stance. Okay, but it's just giving a, a wide variety here so that he can't read the pattern and figure it out and then catch me with something. Back to that calf kick, use it to switch my stance. See when I'm moving laterally side to side, it's all it's almost often done like it's somewhat square. As soon as you square off, it's way easier to move side to side, although you become way more vulnerable down the middle, so you gotta use your feet to slip the punches and kicks. Sustain the strike as you saw in the last knockout. I feel like the side kick is still underutilized in MMA. Like people don't know how to defend it. People get hit with it constantly. Um, it's not a stopping shot. It is not a shot that you're going to end a fight with, so that might be why people don't focus on it, but you could say the same thing as the jab. Especially in open stance, a side kick to the leg and the body, money. About two minutes gone by here, round one. Oh, this is good for Johnson. This is like a fight. I know people want to be away from the side of the octagon. Johnson's okay there. And then you see how I, I cover that distance there. Okay, so I double up my jab, and then I blitz in with the left hand. Off the ground completely there. Right? I blitz in with the left hand, switch my stance, and then leave on the opposite angle. People still don't understand these angles. I feel like my footwork system is way more highly developed than most people's. And it's really what I stood on mainly in the UFC. I felt like that was my, my main gift was my movement. It was always very difficult for people to figure out. Still to this day, very difficult for people to figure out. Unfortunately, this outside footwork leads to you getting gripped by wrestlers. So don't do it against wrestlers. The right thing against the wrong person is not the right thing. And if the fight was like this, I could have done this all night. I could have, I could have moved around him all night long. He had the outside foot line though. See, so I went to throw my check hook, but he actually had gotten the foot line already. So then when I went to step back, I almost tripped. Sick front kick. I've been just trying to get him to commit to something. Here he does commit to it. I slipped the shot and I'm, I'm ready to underhook him right away. Double underhooks and now I'm going to turn him. So notice the posture that I'm giving. My back is very straight. I could have my hips in a little more than I, than I do here. I feel like if my hips were in just a little more, it would have taken away any threat from throws from him. But because my feet are wide apart here, it's very difficult for him to throw me with any of his fantastic judo attacks that he has. This part actually Faraz showed me in the locker room. So Faraz is in the locker room and he showed me this framing thing to, to disconnect from the clinch. So I'm just taking my underhook arm here and I'm placing it on the hip. Okay, I took my other arm, other underhook arm and I'm placing it, I believe on his face or in his shoulder. And I'm just gonna push off and exit. Okay, so pushing off his face, my, my right arm, my right arm was underhooking, it pushed off of his hip. My left arm is pushing off of the face, and I exit. So I was feeling pretty good at this point. I was like, oh, well, he can't, he can't strike with me, that's for sure. I'm way too far away from him. He doesn't understand what I'm doing. And then I defended his, I was most worried about the body lock. I wasn't really worried too much about his leg attack, like his, uh, his single double, but I was really worried about the body lock. 
and I was able to nullify it here. So I'm feeling really good right now. Okay, closed stance. I'm, I'm, I'm attacking him in closed stance most times when it's like uh, boxing because I feel like he's less used to that, right? He's more used to the open stance situation fighting a right-handed fighter. Usually southpaws suck at fighting southpaws even more than righties suck at fighting southpaws. They just really don't understand closed stance a lot of the time, right? So I hit him with some like a uh, multi-level attack here. Double jab. Oh. So it's uh, jab to the head, jab to the body, and then I, th I throw the left hand upstairs and then the right hook. Now, my technique isn't really completely on point here because you can see I'm, th I'm throwing the left hand while the right hand is still extended. Looks like a double punch kind of, um, but uh, I've only been using Southpaw since like 2015, 2015, late 2014. Can't hate it too much. And that landed. That little right hook at the end landed. And yeah, he didn't want any anymore. He's like, I'm getting close to this guy. See, so he starts pressuring really close right away. Yeah, throws the one, two, and changes level. This is just like classic Makachev. Gets to the single. And then gets to the double. This is annoying. Okay, I had the underhook, but he was too low, so it was like compressing it to my leg. So I decided to choose the wizard instead. I take my right arm out, I go to wizard. Oh no, I'm pushing his face away. I'm trying to lift him up and push his head off my leg. He goes back down to it. I should have just taken a wizard and got to an angle. Because this is this allows him to connect to my second leg here. He's going to pressure right through this and just go to my second leg. Boom. Now he's got both my legs tied up. This is super annoying. Okay, so this is this is where I really screw up. All that could have been better. I could have been more at an angle to him. I shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have been able to get to that second leg that easy. Once he takes me to my butt, this is where it gets really bad. Some of you may have watched the other video that we put out on the whole story behind this fight, but I had only been able to grapple for the last month or so. My rib had been done and like I don't know, sheared cartilage or did something to my rib, popped something, I don't know what. Maybe three months out from the fight, when I when I signed the contract to, to, to go and fight, I figured I would have enough time to prepare, but the rib really didn't come back very well. So I didn't do a lot of grappling for this camp, and it really shows, because I, I do not scramble here. Watch how long I stay with my butt on the ground and just posting on his head. I remember this moment. I remember this moment just thinking like, it's okay, I'm all good, I don't have to worry. When I should have like been operating like the floor and the wall is fire right now and like moving his head, using a cross face and a bridge to move his head to the other side and then hip heist and get back to my feet or start bridging or start butterfly sweeping or, or whatever, but like make moves. I can't just stay here and hope that everything is gonna be okay or believe that everything is gonna be okay because I'm comfortable on the ground. Right, and now he's wrapping up the leg. This is the typical Dagestan. And now he sits back on the leg. So I have my knee line free. Okay, I'm pushing him away. I'm gonna elect to go and try to fit my body into this space under here and start using my, my guard to sweep. Because my knee line is free, I can still sweep with it. Here we go, I'm sitting forward into more of a wedge position. I punch an underhook. I've got an overhook here, and I'm gonna try to sweep but he uses that underhook to turn me, right? He turns me this way. I wanted to use my underhook to turn him this direction, and then he uses his to do the opposite. So now I don't have a lot of options here. I'm gonna try to use the top leg to elevate and dip under to cross ashy, right? Which is like a leg lock entanglement that, um, leads to you ending in the Senkaku slash 411 slash honey hole slash the saddle position. Okay, I'm trying to elevate with this top leg, the Sumigeshi, and then I'm trying to grab with this arm here, and I need to scoot this leg that's on the ground back behind his hamstring, and then have my head kind of under his legs here, and then I'll be able to sweep him and, and get on top. As I'm trying to go under, I'm trying to bring my head under here, his hips are falling down very quickly. See, he moved back. As I'm going up and under, 
He's gonna push my head towards the fence and move his hips back so I can't get under his legs. As soon as I can't get under his legs, my guard's gonna die here. Boom, okay, and now we smash both of my legs together on this side, okay? He's got a deep underhook here. This is an easy pass for him. This is very difficult for me to use my guard in any sort of attack from this position, at least that I'm aware of, and drop a comment if you know how to use your guard to attack in this position. So I dip one under, and I'm trying to get this one out, right? I'm trying to get this leg out to it looks like maybe a half guard or something. His underhook is hiked super high. This is, this is the time where I'm really feeling his weight. He is so strong in this position, it is crazy. Like I remember thinking that he feels like he's made of rocks. Like he's like that, the thing, right? The thing from like Fantastic Four. That's Makachev. Only when he's on top of you though. Not when you're clenching with him. Didn't feel strong. But here, super strong. Okay, looks like I put in a butterfly hook on this side, but I'm so flattened out. It's like I would have to like quad extend his leg away and, and elevate him like that. It's just not gonna happen. I'm so flat. He just slides right through it and he's three quarter mount. Okay, so we I had a feeling that at some point I would end in three quarter mount, I would end up here. We knew that Makachev loved this position so he planned against it. My plan was to take my here right arm and shove under his leg and then and go down to deep half guard. That is very foiled, that plan is very foiled because he has his left arm under hook and it's high up. I can't, I can't thread it under his leg and pull myself down. Super annoying, super annoying. I thought about there, I thought about trying to push my arm inside so I could dip it down to his leg, but worried about exposing my back, so I didn't. See, thinking about what to do with this arm, this right overhook that I have, I'm trying to like get it inside somehow. Okay, and he's taking his foot out, and here I think is where he mounts my legs, right? He's like kind of just sitting on my quads, but they're smashed together. Both quads are like knee to knee together on my side. And boom, okay, and now he locks my thighs, right? So now my legs are locked together and I'm kind of on my back. And this is a very foreign position to any BJJ guy, okay? So I'm at a loss as to what to do in this position. Yeah, didn't really plan for this exact position um, and I, I didn't know what to do. So I grab him, I grab double underhooks, in the mount, something, I'm not mounted, but like Senkaku mount or whatever. Um, he's mounting my legs. I'm just pulling him off. I just, I, I pull him upwards to the mount. I'm like, no, just take the mount. At least I know what to do from there. That's probably not a great answer, but that's all I had at the time. Okay, so... I continued to hold on to try to get him to push me away and then when he went to push me away I was going to use that force that he was exerting to attempt to launch into an escape. Um, you can see my hands are going to go to his hips quite quickly. Right, so my hands go to his hips. Unfortunately, my elbows are outside his knee line. That's not the greatest. And I'm trying to get his hips elevated so I can slide my knee back under. He's able to grab my wrist. Watch his wrist grip. Super annoying, this pissed me off. See, he just grabs my wrist and peels it off. And now watch where it goes. Boom, way out there. It's way out there. I have no control over that arm now. He's like pinned me like that. This is so annoying. Oh, and you can see I'm trying to walk my, my legs up. Okay, he pinned my legs out, my arm out, and I start getting my feet onto the fence to see if I can generate some momentum off of that to start getting my guard back. See, climbing my feet on the fence. Okay, then I go to try to need an elbow escape on this side, just using my leg to hook that ankle and try to pull it in. Didn't work. Okay, I bring my elbow in and he switches. He lets go with his left arm and he grabs under my head from the right side. And now he's set up, right? He's got that wrist grip and he's gonna start ground and pounding here. This is where it happened. Okay, so again, I, I'm trying to walk the fence and get my feet to the fence so I can buck him off. And he uses that to turn the corner. Boom, 
He turns the corner, goes towards S mount, and attacks with the armbar. I kind of felt it coming as it was happening, so I go in like last minute attempt, I block my arm. I block my arm and I throw my wrist under his leg. You can see my, my left wrist is under his leg. He's trying to grab, he's grabbing my right arm to try to break it. Okay, so what, 27 seconds left. I didn't know it was that much time. I was hoping that I would be able to hold on here. Definitely not a good idea. Okay, so watch how he, watch how he breaks through my grip. Super annoying. There you go. Okay, so he takes the leg off. He grabs that, that arm that was really stopping him. He wants my, my right arm, okay? My left arm is stopping him. So he grabs the left arm, right? Pulls it off and then puts his leg back over my face. Now he grabs my right arm because now my right arm is, is vulnerable because this, this isn't locked under, so this is available. He pulls this down here and then he just grabs this one and starts. To... Yeah. And there we go, completely extended, completely extended, locked out. I thought for a minute, maybe I should just not tap and, and see if I can let it break and escape, but like, you're still done regardless. Like you're, the fight's still over and now you have a broken arm you have to recover from, like it doesn't make sense. I didn't have any hands to tap, right? I'm like this, right? So I just, I said tap. Super annoying. Even more annoying was that most people didn't even know who this guy was when I fought him. I told them that I was fighting Islam Makhachev and people are like, who's that? I'm like, oh, it's Khabib's teammate. They're like, oh, he must be tough then. He's Khabib's teammate or whatever, right? Nobody even knew how good this guy was. Regardless, he's good, but he's not that good. It's not that he doesn't have, he has no holes. He has holes, like Volk is exposed, right? Would I beat him if I had another shot? Maybe, yeah. I, be, I believe what I've learned and what I know today I believe that I have the ability to beat him. Does my body have the ability to make it through a fight camp? Hell no, not even close, not even close. I can barely even get rear naked choked anymore, okay? Because I got so many plates in my jaw that as soon as people start digging my chin, my jaw will swell up. Like, I can't fight anymore, I'm done. But my fighters are going to end up fighting these Dagestanis. And uh, I can guarantee you that when that happens, there's gonna be different results. If you liked the video, drop a like, subscribe. You got anything to say, comment. You know I like to hear all your things that you like to say, especially about left hooks like this. Peace.